you probably know what a CAPTCHA is, right? It's the squiggly letters and numbers uh, that you have to type in or to get past a login form or a sign up form or to post a comment or something like that. Uh, but do you know what they're for? They're to stop bots, or rather, they're to stop programs from using things that humans should use. The problem is, though, is that they're really hard for humans to get past because they've gotten so complicated, uh, and also bots are really, really good at bypassing them. There are whole services around bypassing them. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to bypass CAPTCHAs with Puppeteer and Headless Chrome. Let's get to it. So you might be thinking right now, hey Jared, aren't you a little bit concerned showing these hackery stuff on YouTube uh, and getting your channel or videos taken down? And the answer is no, because no one in their right mind considers a CAPTCHA or anything like that to be an actual defense. It's a hurdle. It's something that adds cost to an attack or, or automation or anything like that. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here is, is what cost it adds and how you can absorb that cost if bypassing CAPTCHAs is something that's important to you. One quick note before we get too deep into this. I've written uh, an article on this on Medium, and if you're more of the reader type or you wanna skim right to the code, copy and paste and get moving on pretty quickly, check the description down below. You'll find a link to the article and uh, you can get started there. If you need any uh, instruction or information on how things work, uh, then you can check out this video for an explanation as to what the code is doing. So we're gonna be doing this by using a CAPTCHA solver service. There are a load of CAPTCHA solver services out there. You can just Google CAPTCHA solver and pick from any of the dozens out there uh, that fit your needs. One of the most popular ones out there is Death by CAPTCHA, uh, which actually also has this little support widget down here in case you need some extra support. These all operate by charging a certain uh, dollar amount for a number of solved CAPTCHAs. Death by CAPTCHA charges $1.39 for 1,000 solved CAPTCHAs or 99 cents for gold members if you find that this is something you really need to invest in. I'm going to be using 2CAPTCHA today just because I have credit already on 2CAPTCHA uh, and it's easy to get started. But all of these really operate in very, very similar ways and they have similar functionality. Uh, so if you're using a particular environment or tool uh, that works better with one, just use that one. The way these work is that they, they have an API that uh, allows you to send an image or some sort of challenge to their service. And then there's another uh, API endpoint that you can query in order to pull for the response. So if you're dealing with standard text-based CAPTCHAs or something like that, you can grab that image out of the page, uh, send it to 2 capture or whatever else, and then query another URL in order to look for uh, the response that you should give for that CAPTCHA. And one of the most popular CAPTCHAs that exists out there today is Google's reCAPTCHA. There are three versions of Google's reCAPTCHA out there. Version one, which you really don't see much anymore, were the two squiggly words that you'd have to type in. Uh, version two, which is uh, right here, the, the, uh, you click the I'm not a robot button, you get a little swirl and then a green check mark if everything looked okay, uh, and then you can move on. If you didn't look okay, then you'd be presented with uh, this grid of pictures where you'd have to uh, solve some sort of something that only a human should be able to solve, uh, like select all the squares with a bicycle. Is a motorcycle a bicycle? Uh, let's say it is. Hey, it is a bicycle. These things suck. They're hard. They're actually anxiety inducing. There's also version three of Google's reCAPTCHA, which is completely invisible and just gives the application server a score and they have to figure out what to do with that score. So what we're gonna do today is automate a page that has Google's reCAPTCHA on it with Chrome and Puppeteer to show how you can get past this with a service like 2CAPTCHA. We're going to use Reddit's signup page because that was just the first page I came across uh, that had a Google reCAPTCHA on it. Um, and we can see it pop up here after we enter some stuff. And then we can say, I am not a robot. And then reCAPTCHA says, I think you might be a robot. Prove to me that you're not a robot. And I find all the stuff that does cars. Is, is a van a car? Ah, hey, I'm not a robot. And then you can move on if my password's matched. So working with Google's reCAPTCHA is slightly different with uh, 2CAPTCHA because you don't have an image to work with. 
You're not gonna be sending uh, the, the grid of pictures and doing anything with that and moving mouse movements. Uh, what you wanna do is look for the site key that a web page has embedded somewhere and then use that as the uh, challenge that you're submitting to 2Captcha because all the information that 2Captcha needs uh, in order to give you a response is included with that site key. And to find that site key, you can usually just view page source and control F site key. And here you go. So you're gonna to wanna to grab this on whatever page you're automating. I'm including this in a configuration blob at the top. You have a site key right here, which is what we just grabbed out of the page. You'll also need the URL of the page that the CAPTCHA is intended to protect. So here we have that. It's HTTPS uh, colon slash slash old dot reddit dot com slash login. You need an API key for a 2CAPTCHA. I have included that in this secret file right here that you can't see because you should be using your own API key, not my API key. Um, all it is is a string, uh, you, you've, seen, you've seen API keys before. I don't need to tell you what's what. Um, and then I have the 2CAPTCHA submit and uh, retrieve URLs right here. Um, nothing really special about that. So here I've got a get username and get password function. Uh, that's to just kind of suck in the username and password uh, functionality into, into a function. So that if I wanted to, let's say like register multiple uh, uh, Reddit users, if I wanted to say like influenced an election or something like that, um, I, could, I could automatically generate new usernames here and their the appropriate passwords uh, in, in a function or a separate module somewhere. Here are the Chrome options that we're passing to Puppeteer. So it's important when you're bypassing hurdles meant to block automation uh, that you look as legitimate as possible. Now you could use Chromium, um, but if you are running a system that can run a legitimate production Chrome, you might as well just point to that because that's gonna look a lot more legitimate than a just a Chrome instance, a Chromium instance. So I have I've pointed this to my local Chrome. I have specified that I want it to not be headless because I wanna actually see what's going on. Uh, I, I don't have to do that. Once uh, I've got everything working, I can turn headless to true and just be on my way. Uh, I've added slow-mo 10. This is actually important because uh, a lot of automation detection will uh, swipe you away if you type too fast. So if you blurt out entire uh, strings of text in an input field in a microsecond, then you're gonna come off as more automated than not. So you have to slow yourself down. Uh, luckily, Puppeteer has a slow-mo option. You can pass it to the whole Puppeteer instance. Uh, which will just slow down everything it does. And uh, the adding 10 millisecond uh, delay between every uh, interaction is enough. So next we have our main function. And I've actually, I've commented out uh, the CAPTCHA solving stuff right now so that we can run our script and just see what, ha what it does without a CAPTCHA solver. Here we have a Puppeteer launch, which we are launching with our Chrome options. Uh, we are making a new tab. We are navigating to our page URL with go to. We are getting our username. Uh, we are typing it out in the user underscore reg uh, input box. We're getting our password and we are typing that in the two password fields. And then we are clip, click, clicking our submit button. Let us see if this works. Pop up. Choose a username, type in passwords. Uh, password is good, username is good. Uh, we try to submit and uh, Reddit complains about us missing something. It's not a very good error message, um, but uh, I'm assuming it's complaining that we did not complete the CAPTCHA. So we have to actually complete our CAPTCHA. Let's cancel out of here. So the first step here is to send to our CAPTCHA solver, in this case 2CAPTCHA, the details necessary for 2CAPTCHA to start working. So here I've bucketed all that logic in a method called initiate CAPTCHA request. This is the form data that we have to send to 2CAPTCHA's uh, API endpoint. Uh, we are specifying that it is a reCAPTCHA, which we do with the method colon user reCAPTCHA. Here's where you specify whether or not it's an image or something else. Um, so we're, we're solving reCAPTCHA, no images. We specify that here. Uh, we pass it the site key that we pulled from our source. We are giving it our API key that we got from 2CAPTCHA. We are sending our page URL, which is the URL that the CAPTCHA is protecting. 
uh, and we are specifying that we would prefer a JSON response. We are logging, that we're submitting a solution request to ToCaptcha uh, and we post to the submit URL with that form data. And then we get a response back and we parse that response and then get the request ID out of it. The request ID is something that ToCaptcha sends back to us uh, so that we can use that request ID to pull for the request response, which we'll have to do after or at another time. So here our request ID uh, is floating right here. The next step is to pull for the request results, which I have bucketed here. Pass it the API key and the request ID. I do have some additional parameters here that have defaults uh, with the thought that I might customize these at some point later in time. So we have the API key, we have the request ID, we have the number of, or the maximum number of retries to pull, uh, which I've set to 30. Uh, we have a polling interval of 1500 milliseconds, 1.5 seconds, and a delay of 15 seconds. So this is uh, the cost that is added to uh, bypassing captures. One, we have to pay to captcha, and two, it slows our automation way, way, way down. And that is a substantial cost. Uh, time is money. Uh, so we are here. We log out uh, that we are waiting just so we get something on the console. Uh, we uh, await the timeout. Uh, we await our 15 seconds. Uh, timeout here is just a function that, it's a set timeout that returns a promise so that I can use it with await. And then we are pulling for request capture results. So here I'm using the, the NPM module promise dash polar, which is a very, very useful NPM module for when you need to pull for in a promise uh, producing method. So it'll continually pull that promise waiting for a resolution. Uh, and every time it gets a rejection, it'll try again up to a certain amount. So here our task function for the poll method uh, is request rec capture results, which we're passing in a key and ID. Uh, and then we're, we're waiting the 1.5 seconds in between and we are trying this at most 30 times. So request capture results, we, we pass it the API key and the request ID. Um, we form the URL uh, with this template string. It's just the, the uh, retrieve URL endpoint for to captcha. Um, we'll pass it our API key again, of course. Uh, we are specifying an action of get. We are passing it our request ID and then uh, specifying that here as well, we would prefer a JSON response. Uh, from this method, we are passing back an asynchronous function um, to task function. So the function that's actually being pulled here is this inner function. And then within that asynchronous function, we are returning a promise and the executor for that promise uh, is right here. Uh, so we have the resolution or the resolve and the reject functions. Uh, we are console logging every time. Uh, so we get something on the console. We're making a request for this URL up here, getting the response, parsing the response as JSON. If the response status is zero, uh, then we are going to reject this, this uh, try for the poll uh, because that just means ToCaptcha has not yet uh, concluded its CAPTCHA solving process. So we need to try again. If the status is anything but zero, then we resolve this promise uh, with the response that the recaption needs in order to proceed. Uh, let's actually console log that value out so we can see what it actually looks like. Now we can log that out up here so we can see what they all look like. Now we go back up here. Uh, so uh, we have our response after we pulled for the requested results. We log it out right here and then we enter that response in the g-recaptcha-response field, which should be present on the page now. Uh, and we just shove that in there uh, with nothing special, no massaging, uh, and then we are good to go. So let's see if that actually works. So we have a page, uh, we have submitted our solution to reCAPTCHA, we've entered stuff, now we're going to wait. Uh, 
There's nothing saying that you have to wait 15 seconds, uh, but I found that that 15 seconds is a good uh, starting point, so we're not just pulling more than we need to. Uh, so here we've got uh, polling for response, status zero, status zero, status zero, and request caption not ready. Ah, there we go. Status one, uh, this is our response. We've entered it in the, the field, we've clicked submit, and now we are logged in and passed reCAPTCHA. Boom, that's it. That's really how easy it is. Uh, it's wiring up an API and actually you can find uh, ready-made NPM modules that will do all this for you. So all you have to enter is your API key. But this is something that, that you can do now. Uh, these sites, they might look a little shady. Uh, you might have to buy things with Bitcoin or stuff like that, um, but they work. And if you're looking to bypass CAPTCHAs, they are fantastic. So that's it. Thank you very much. You are now on your way to being an elite automator of anything you want to on the internet. Uh, if you like this stuff, then please leave comments on uh, how it works for you or what problems you might have. Uh, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at JS Overson. Uh, and I'll, I'll catch you later. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell thingy if this is your bag, uh, because that helps me uh, know that I should continue doing this. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.